Hello everyone, and welcome to another video. So in this video, I'm going to address uh, a question that I've been asked quite a few times now. And as you can probably tell by the title, it's how do I make my videos in Vito? Um, so I'll try and make this video as short as I can. Um, there are some um, things that you will need. You will need two monitors, for instance, uh, to be able to capture both what I'm seeing, the first person view, uh, and also the S cam view. Um, um, I'll go through a few of my settings for OBS. I'll go through a few of the settings for the S cam. Um, and then I'll look at, um, as I said, some of the post. I'll record a video um, and then we'll see how I do some of the post stuff as well. So without further ado, let's jump in and take a look. Okay then, first things first, in order to record more than one view, you need to have more than one monitor so you can turn on this setting, multi-display mode. So it will show the spectator cam, the S cam, on your second screen. And by doing that, that means you can record both your first and second screen in OBS, uh, just with uh, a few setting changes in OBS. Um, the other thing is, I just wanted to show you this view first. Um, just to show you, I also use OVR Toolkit, which is here on my wrist. Um, I like this because it has a readout here, so it can show you how much of your computer's resources you're using to record. And the other good thing about that is, with uh, a double click of both the triggers, I get my windows attached to my wrist. Um, so usually you wouldn't see this view, I would be recording the... the first person view instead of VR view but I thought I'd just show you this. Um, it can help show you what my settings are. Um, so first of all you can see this is my scene and my source so I've got this is my VTOL recording uh, scene. I have more of them in scene collections um, but I'm capturing a few different sources. Um, if you want to know about these you'd be better off finding other YouTube videos than mine. Um, there's a lot more people know a lot more about up um, OBS than I do. Um, generally though I have Game Capture 2 which is screen 2 which is at the top and this would normally be screen 1 but it's VR view which is this game capture um, so really I don't need um, screen 2. Um, also in advanced settings for your audio just here all my audio is set to record on different tracks you see this so the game audio would generally track one, so that's application being VTOL or desktop audio is track one. My microphone on track two, and I've also got Discord audio on track three. So that helps um, with post-processing when you're editing the video. Next, if I just get into the settings, this is quite hard to do. With the quest tracking and my shaky hands. Oh, there we go, here's my setting screen. So I'll have a look in my output for recording. So I'm recording now, so I obviously can't go through m uh, these settings. I can't change much, um, but just where stuff's recorded, I record in an MKV and then um, remux it afterwards. My encoder is on my GPU. If you can get it on your GPU, that's really where you want to get the GPU doing the work rather than the CPU. And you can see the here's my three tracks that I want to record. Also, you can see my output is 1920 by 2160. So that's two standard HD screens on top of each other. And you can set that up, I think, is it in general? Um, video, there it is. So you can set your screen size up, or your canvas size there, and that allows you to have two full-size screens that you can record, and then you can split that again in post-processing in your video editor. Um, a couple of the other things... Go back to settings... Is... I originally used to call, uh, record in CBR, constant bitrate, and set it to about 40,000. Um, but recently I've changed this to CQP, um, thanks to a bit of advice on the VTOL Discord from Operator Drewski. Um, so I've changed this to um, constant quality. Um, the lower the number, the higher the file size, the better the quality. So I think it starts off at 20 as standard. I've just knocked mine down to 18. Again, the file size will be bigger doing that. So 
just beware of that. And that's pretty much my settings in OBS. So these can help, you know, change the audio sliders and things like that. And double click to get that away. And like I say, I've got the nice wristwatch so I can see my frames and RAM and things like that. See what's affecting those. So next we'll jump back into the cockpit and take a look at the S cam. Okay then, so here we are, here's the S cam. Um, I'll try and keep my first person view on. This is the view that you get from the Quest. Um, otherwise it wouldn't show the screen. Um, and I'll try and keep this screen in the corner as well so you can see um, my changes as well as what's actually happening on screen. Um, so you can see at the moment it's just scrolling through the views and that's because I have it set to random as we can see here so every eight seconds because I've got auto reset set to on every eight seconds it's going to randomly cycle through all of the modes and um, so it's not going to go through them in any particular order it's just going to keep cycling and keep cycling if you want a specific view you've got to turn random off and then all we do is just press the mode button so we get stationary, which is basically the camera is in a fixed position and will watch you fly past. Or um, I've got it set to target at the moment, but I'm not targeting anything. Um, so it will be looking at me. If I try and just find something now and see if I can target it, there's, there's some aircraft. So I'll just grab one of these aircraft. Come on, lock it up. There we go. So you can see that switch to following those aircraft now, and that's what target view will do. Uh, if I unlock that target, um, again, it should uh, look at me the next time it cycles through these views. But that stationary view, basically, it's just a fixed camera position watching um, either yourself, what you've got targeted, or the other option is missile. Um, so if I just fired off a missile, um, again, it would be stationary just watching the missile go past. And you can see this is also auto resetting at uh, this eight second. Some of them will have a reset like stationary and um, follow, uh, not follow along, fly along. Um, other ones, so um, as I say, fly along. Uh, this is fly along and it should reset itself every eight seconds as well. Again, if I lock up one of these targets and set that to target, we'll get a fly along from the enemy I've just locked up. Hopefully, there he is. Uh, it was the bomber that I got there. Let's go back to self. Um, so fly along again. It's going to try and keep whatever you're targeting roughly in the middle of the screen while the camera moves around and pans and things like that. Next, we have a few fixed position cameras. So I've got one here at the moment over my shoulder. And these will, again, just move all around. So one's just popped up here um, in the just in front of the canopy. And these will just move around as well in, in general fixed positions. There we go. Hello. Next, we have Chase, which is the view that we're probably all used to um, in flight games, War Thunder, games like that. Um, it will just go in a chase view between either you, your missile, or... Um, now, if you set it to what you have targeted, like this, you can see it's chasing me, uh, but it's following my target, which is quite handy, because if I just go weapons hot now... Let's give him a name, Nine. Shoot. Oh. Try that again. Shoot. There we go, off goes an AIM-9, so I can watch myself, I can watch the missile, and I can watch the enemy as well, so again, target uh, gives just some nice different views. Um, I've only recently started using target. Splash. Next, we have some preset views. So, uh, I'm not quite sure how preset views work, it's... Uh, let me just... Uh, fix my altitude again. Um, they're a little bit like stationary views, but it does seem to uh, move around a little different. The other one is as well, let's uh, set to missile. Oh, I believe there is something in front of us somewhere. There he is above us. So let's go high and see if we can get a missile off on one of these. And let's go into a different mode. So 
is fly along, for instance. So that's um, on the screen set to missile. So that can be quite nice to get some action shots there. Stop uh, shooting at people. Just level out and get the autopilots on as well. And that's uh, that's it for your views. Um, smooth look. Sorry, I didn't get to smooth look. That is obviously a nice smooth date version of the first person camera view because um, these can get a little bit shaky with head movements and things like that. The the headsets do move around a little on your face and, the, and it does pick that up. And again we've got camcorder and camcorder is this little thing that you can grab with the trigger and move around. Um, one little tip that I've picked up off um, other YouTuber. Again Slippery Gypsy keeps stealing all these ideas. Um, but it's to set the camera um, when you want to show people the controls set the camera in front of you like this so they can see all of the controls and then you can just crop out the screen or the control that you need and it just gives a nice steady stable look at your cockpit otherwise let's just set the camera back in position um, a few other options that we've got on here, so you can uh, start and end the S-cam. If I press end, that will stop recording. Um, I can choose to view what's on the screen as well. And also we've got this button, audio on and off. So I'm just going to go to... Um, let's go to a nice fly-along mode. Um, so looking at the fly-along view at the moment, we've got audio off. Um, and I also am not hearing any audio from S-CAM. If you want to record audio from S-CAM, that's how you do it. You turn audio on, but <laughs> you can hear the audio uh, coming through the headset from the screen. And turning view off doesn't really do anything. So you just beware doing that because it will drown out things like the RWR noise and radio messages and things like that. So. Just beware with recording audio. It does uh, add a little bit of realism, but uh, it can be a problem hearing things as well. Next here we've got, uh, I'm just leaving this on auto field of view, so it's gonna try and fit in the camera as best it can. If I turn that off, we've got FOV5 right up close. So let's start furthest away. So we've got uh, 100 F, uh, FOV, we've got 60. That fly along view wasn't great there. Let me... Uh, Change to a mode, maybe, there we go, let's change to chase, uh, this looks a little better. So we've got 60, 40, 25, 15, and 5. Now generally, again, I will leave it on auto FOV and set it to 60. This generally doesn't matter with views like um, chase, like I've got it on now, but auto 60 can have different effects on like preset views, um, I think camcorder does stationary will fly along will so it does affect it a little okay then so there we are that's um my um the game settings at least to enable the second screen so you can record your s cam on a second screen uh, i showed you some of my obs settings as well to be able to do that you know give yourself a double sized canvas so you can have two full screen recordings um few other settings there as well on OBS. Um, now, I am not an expert on OBS. There are a lot more people who know a lot more about it than I do. Uh, but So do do your own research as far as your own settings and things like that. Um, depending on your computer, different settings are going to work differently to what I've got. Um, I can put a lot of strain on my GPU. I've got quite a good GPU. Um, if your GPU struggles with VR as it is, then you want to put some of that encoded onto the CPU. Um, so let me um, take what we've looked at and, and learned about with those settings and the S-CAM settings. I'll jump into uh, a quick mission and we'll put all that together and have a look at the outcome. Okay then, well first of all, quick apologies for the microphone. Uh, my desktop microphone isn't as, quite as good as the Quest 2. Um, but this is my post-processing, if you will. Uh, I use DaVinci Resolve, the free version. Um, again, I'm not an expert in this, so I'm not going to give too too many tips away. There's definitely many more people out there that can uh, 
definitely help you out a lot more with DaVinci Resolve than I can. Um, but some of the things that I have done here, you can see the original video. I'll just hover over this. Um, you can see that raw video that's come from OBS is the two cameras. And then just down here, basically all I've done with these is just split that in half. So I've copied one track, pasted it to the track above. And then after that, I've gone through and I've split them up into the different clips that I want to use. Um, a couple of tips to do this is control and backslash, which is the one next to the uh, left shift key. Um, just zoom in here so we can see. So if I've not got anything selected and I press control and backslash, that puts a cut in. Um, so that's a nice, easy key to use. Control Z will undo. Um, if you select a single track, be it audio or video, um, you can cut a single track. If you find that the tracks are linked, which is what this is, um, so if you click a track and it highlights more than one track, just hold the Alt key and click the track and that will single select the track. Um, a couple of other things is down here you can see this FX symbol and this um, basically is these audio um, or video, you can have video ones as well. Um, but these are audio effects and you get the effects library here in DaVinci Resolve. So if I just click play, oh, try again, play. And then we'll just rewind that and go to the effect and turn it off and then play again. Send it back on halfway through. And it's just a matter of just dragging these. So that is uh, distortion. So you just drag and drop it onto your clip and then you can play around with it. You've got some um, predefined settings here or you can um, tweak around with them yourself. I'm going to undo that because I don't want distortion on there. There's video effects as well, so video transitions. Uh, I'm not sure if I can... Have I put one in here somewhere? I'm sure I have. There's one. So if I just uh, click on that transition, you can see that's here, video transition. Dip to colour, it basically just fades to black um, as you go through that transition and you can change the length of that transition. You can you know, push and pull with these just like you can with the track lengths and things like that. Um, so yeah, basically that's it. I put it into DaVinci Resolve. I play around with it, cut it into clips, cut out the good stuff, add effects, do whatever you need to do. And then um, that's basically my editing, my post-processing. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Whiskey flight, mogul. Ready five. Begin startup and prep for launch. Briefing to follow. Mogul, whiskey one one copies. Whiskey one one, mogul. Have our approach. Has a civilian airliner that's not responding to calls and is off course. Airliner call sign is Speedbird 8523. Current position 60 miles north northeast. Angels 25 heading 195. Notify tower when ready to taxi. Mogul, whiskey one one, copies. Tower, whiskey one one, request takeoff. Whiskey one one, you're cleared to taxi to Cat One. Tower Whiskey 1-1 one, one, copies Cliff Cat 1. Whiskey 1-1, one, one. shields up, ready to go. Whiskey 1-1, one, one, let's go. Turn to heading 025, climb and maintain Angels 25. Clear to intercept. Be advised, speed 
Mogul, Whiskey 1-1, one, one. copies, turning, heading 025 to intercept Speedbird. Whiskey 1-1 one, one understands 216 potential souls on board. Whiskey 1-1, one, one, Mogul, be advised, Speedbird 8523 has left Angels 25 and is descending through Angels 15. Have our approach is advising a potential terrorist threat. Mogul, Whiskey 1-1, one, one, copies. Speedbird leaving Angels 25, down to Angels 15. Muggle Whiskey 1-1, one, one, radar contact Speedbird. Bearing 150, Mach point five zero, range 14, scratch range 16 miles. Muggle Whiskey 1-1, one, one, turning to intercept Speedbird now. Speedbird, this is Whiskey 1-1, one, one. copy. Speedbird, Whiskey 1-1, one, one. do you copy? Mogul Whiskey 1-1, one, one. flares for effect. Understood, no effect. Stand by. Speedbird 8523, United States Navy on guard. You are in restricted airspace. Turn to 030 immediately and come up on guard. Whiskey 11, one, one. Mogul, try again. Close within 350 feet and flare. Do it quickly, we're running out of time here. Speedbird, Whiskey 11, one, one. reply, over. Speedbird 8523, United States Navy, you are in restricted airspace. You will be fired upon if you do not turn to 030 immediately. Respond on guard. Uh, military jet, do not fire. This is Speedbird 8523. We are turning to 030 and will maintain flight level 180. Speedbird 8523, US Navy carrier Expedite your turn and exit the protected airspace. That was close, Speedbird. You are almost cooked. Uh, expedite turn, Speedbird 8523. Uh, yes, uh, it was a long flight and, uh, well, someone may well have fallen asleep. Uh, sorry for the trouble, Speedbird 8523. Whiskey 1-1, Mogul. Escort Speedbird 8523 out of our airspace. Fire off some more flares if they fall asleep again. Mogul, Whiskey 1-1, one, one, copies, escort Speedbird, X fire airspace. Fire flares for effect if we lose contact. Speedbird 8523, turn to heading 050. You are 56 miles southwest of Abar Airport. Contact Abar Approach on 127.35. 127.35, Speedbird 8523, good day. Whiskey 1-1, one, one, Mogul. Good job. RTB, contact tower for approach. Mogul, Whiskey 1, copy. Job well done, RTB. Whiskey 1-1, one, one. cleared to land on the carrier. Tower, Whiskey 1-1, one, one. copy. Cleared for landing on carrier. Whiskey 1-1, one, one. call the ball. Whiskey 1-1, one, one, 13 ball. Right for lineup. Right for lineup. Come left. Power. One wire. Welcome back. Follow the taxi path to your parking area. Okay then, well there we go. Um, there's some uh, tips and advice from me on how I create my videos. Um, it's not a very in-depth look. Um, there are things that you will need to do yourself, like I said, like OBS settings you will need to look at yourself, depending on your editing software as well. Um, your, your computer's resources. Uh, there's a lot goes into how well you can make the videos and I'm still learning about the process but hopefully that can help um, one or two of you make videos of your own. Until the next uh, video, bye bye.